Hey, what's up, everybody? Gonna do a uh, classic rock reaction, man. This is an album reaction, man, and it's featuring the music of Uriah Heep. Um, haven't done a lot of Uriah Heep, but enough to get a good, good measure of them, and that they are certainly fantastic. Their signature sound, that progressive rock signature sound, is second to none, man. So, uh, this album is called Salisbury, and uh, looking forward to checking it out. First off, I want to give a shout out and a thanks very much to Marco, aka a national acrobat. Marco, thanks, man. Uh, Marco says, uh, Hi, Wayne. This time I'd like to recommend the album Salisbury by Uriah Heep. It's their second studio album, released 50 years ago in January of 71. Might be right up your alley with its blend of classic hard rock and progressive rock. Lots of sweet Hammond organ and some anti war themes. Hope you like it. Okay, man. You know it's up my alley, man. So, let's hit this up. Full album. And, uh... Damn, Marco. Th there's a song here. Uh... Holy cow. There's a song here that's like, uh... 16 minutes and 18 seconds long. Holy cow. Wow, okay. We're in for a trip. See, when uh, people send me recommendations, I, all I do is I basically take the links, put it in a folder, and then uh, when I open up the folder is when I really take a look at it. So, damn, yeah, Marco. This song better be the shit, let me tell you. All right, Uriah Heep. Salisbury full album. Let's get it. Bird of Prey. Cheers. Cheers to you, Marco. Makes me think of Rob Halford from Judas Priest. I can see that look that says beware. Try to move in closer if you dare. So I must sit and play my waiting game. So I'm thinking of a hawk waiting for the prey to expose itself. Pretending to fly away.
got my imagination going everywhere now. Some bands have that ability just to take you. Oh, baby. Yeah, I remember these guys are... Tune, man. Good start. Great musicianship. It leaves you to kind of conclude the story on your own, I think. The park. lost his faith in something.
I'm still not catching what the state of or what the cause of his sadness is. Um, I'll listen to this. This just made the song. So why my heavy heart you say when tears would stay a sight so gay? My brother's dreams once he did so until he died. Hey, I see. I just had to wait and listen. He lost his brother. song, Sam. Time to live. Sweet as hell, isn't it? I'm not sleeping on the guitar stick. Let me see the sunshine. Let me feel the rain. Let me go where I wanna go. I wanna smell the flower. See the door. I couldn't imagine a day in prison, much less 20 damn years. Hearing Rob Halford now. So that's screen. Saw 
I think he's taking the blame for what she did. Well, she came to me one morning, one lonely Sunday morning, her long hair blowing in the midwinter wind. I know not how she found me, for in darkness I was walking and destruction lay around. talking to his son, guardian angel. either a soldier or some revolutionary fighting A story being told here.
the base group. Damn. And I like the harmonies. So the lady who loves us is High Priestess. He's just giving her an honor.
That's a nice light intro. <coughs> You know something epic is coming after. It's kind of bad.
I like a track that just takes its time. Metaphorically, I always go to that slow, winding river, just taking its time, just trickling downstream. Eventually, it's going to reach the ocean, but it's not in a hurry. That's kind of like the solemn feeling that I get. That solo belonged to the bass as much as the lead guitar. That was awesome. There it goes again. bass guitar solo and a Hammond organ. I'm not sleeping on the drums, but those three instruments are just 
biggest gut thing I've had. I love these instrumental pieces in between. That was awesome, holy. Fantastic. An epic piece. I didn't doubt that it would be epic. The whole album is just one really, really excellent uh, piece of uh, works. It, it could have been an extended song from the very beginning. What's the total here, 38 minutes? Could have been an extended song for a whole 38 minutes. You know, they're that paired well. They're paired that well, right? Really, really nice, man. Definitely Salisbury is the uh, unanimous uh, winner here where it comes to um, the musicianship, the story being told, all of that sort of thing. But at the same time, too, though, uh, Lady in Black was really, really good as well. They're all good, you know, I like them all, but uh, those are the two big ones for me. But definitely Salisbury stand on its own. That was excellent. Uh, Marky, you knew what I looked like, man. That was great. Yeah, man. Uriah Heap. When was the last time I did a Uriah Heap? Oh, my gosh. I can't even remember now. It's been three and a half years now. Can you believe that shit? I didn't expect to last for more than six months with a channel like this. Three and a half years. Yo. But yeah, at that time, I haven't, um, I've only done, I would believe, what is it, two or three Uriah Heaps? Gotta get on it. Anyway, hey, speaking of getting on it, let's uh, do a little review here. Uh, check out the lads and then this excellent album, man. Tight. In the pocket, that's how I would describe this album. All the tracks, all the song, the whole mood of the album, the signature uh, song of it. And like you said, Marco, uh, some of the things in it are uh, very, very touching for me. Uh, some of the anti-war themes and um, the lad losing his brother and war and all of these different things. Yeah, definitely relatable and uh, triggering in some places. So let us do a little... Uh, and you know with Salisbury again 
it's almost like a ballad. And uh, I'm glad that these guys aren't just singing a mere sappy ass love song, you know. And it isn't so much a ballad, but it is more kind of like an odyssey of his life and his interaction with this very, very influential lady in his life. The ups and downs, the comings and the goings, and the ebbs and the flows. And they've captured all of that within those 16 minutes, man. And uh, the instrumental breaks in it, yo, man. Every single instrument, including the singer, uh, had their moment to shine. All right, so uh, first, Uriah Heep. Uriah Heep are an English rock band formed in London in '69. Their current lineup consists of lead and rhythm guitarist Mick Box, guitarist Phil Lanson, lead vocalist Bernie Shaw, drummer Russell Gilbrook, and bassist Dave Rimmer. They have experienced numerous lineup changes throughout their 53-year career, leaving Box as the only remaining original member. I remember that about them from uh, a previous uh, reaction and look. Notable former members of the band are... Holy shit. Yo, let's skip over this list, guys. Oh, sorry for my swears. They've went through a lot of people. Okay, let's let's scroll down here. Uriah Heep were part of the early 1970s rock scene and have been referred to as pioneers of the rock, of the hard rock, heavy metal, and progressive rock genres. The band has sold over 40 million albums worldwide with over 4 million sales in the US. Where its best known songs include Gypsy, Easy Living, The Wizard, Sweet Lorraine, and Stealing. They also maintain a significant following and perform at arena sized venues in the Balkans, Germany, Japan, the Netherlands, Russia, Finland, and Scandinavia. Yeah, man, I tell you, uh, I imagine immediately I got a vision of them doing their thing live. I bet you, I bet you this is the way to actually see Uriah Heep. But in speaking about seeing Uriah Heep, I don't know if I've ever actually seen these guys. If I've seen them on stage, live, their uh, stage presence, the structure of their um, entertaining on stage, I, I, uh, I don't have a visual of that. I gotta see what these guys look like and uh, what they sound like live. Because you know, sometimes your live sound, your live disposition is completely different, right? From your studio. Uriah Heep have released 24 studio albums of original material, 20 live albums, and 41 compilation albums, including two greatest hits albums. 12 of the band's studio albums have made it to the UK albums chart. Return to Fantasy reaching number 7 in 75, while of the 15 Billboard 200 Uriah Heep albums, Demons and Wizards was the most successful, number 23 in 1972. In the late 70s, the band had massive success in Germany, where the Lady in Black single was a big hit. Yeah, I have no doubt, that was excellent. So, Salisbury. Salisbury is the second studio album by British rock band Uriah Heep, released in January of 71 by Vertigo Records. It was produced by Jerry Braun. Unlike their first album, songwriting credits for fully half of the record were attributed to Ken Hensley alone, as opposed to the debut's collaborative partnership of frontman David Byron and guitarist Mick Box. Soon after the release, drummer Keith Baker left the band, replaced by Ian Clark from another vertical band, Crescetta. With Clark, the band embarked on their first US tour, supporting Three Dog Night and Steppenwolf. That would be a really, really nice uh, uh, concert uh, threesome, wouldn't it? Musical style. Salisbury is skewered towards the progressive rock genre with its 16-minute title track featuring a 24-piece orchestra and was also significant for Hensley's instant rise to a position as main composer of the group's music. Cover Art The front cover of the album depicted a British chieftain tank, which connects to a title as Salisbury Plain in Wiltshire, England is a military training area. The original LP release 
was a gatefold sleeve with a black and white image of the underside of the chieftain tank on the inside with the turret facing the rear, over which were printed Hensley's comments on each track. Later reissues would be a single sleeve. The American release on Mercury Records featured a different cover image, a man tearing out of his own skin, as did the original Canadian pressings. Subsequent Canadian pressings used the UK artwork. Okay, so yeah, we already know that it's been released in 71, so we'll skip over all the release details. Reception. Uh, according to All Music Reviewer, the album, perfect, the album perfected Uriah Heep's blend of heavy metal power and progressive rock complexity and is too unfocused for the casual listener, but offers enough solid songs for the Uriah Heep completist. I totally get that. Let me read that again. The album perfected Uriah Heep's blend of heavy metal power and progressive rock complexity and is too unfocused for the casual listener, but offers enough solid songs for the Uriah Heep completist. Unquote. Yeah, I totally get that. There is a certain fan base for a certain artist. You know, and uh, not everybody can be a fan of Uriah Heep. Not everybody can be a fan of Yes. I am a fan of Yes, but yo, try to follow that shit. I once had a subscriber and patron say to me, Wayne, it's a fool's errand to try and make a uh, 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 sense of what these guys are trying to convey because sometimes they're not even sure what they're trying to convey but it all sounds really good <laughs> right and how true it is it's absolutely the truth but uh yeah man this definitely is an acquired taste and it's um it's made for certain people you know canadian journalist martin popoff described the album as a dark downer and a failed experiment imputing the cause of the slip to the progressive rock nightmare of the title track and to the hatchet production job. What the hell are you talking about? Everyone's entitled to their own dumbass opinion. Let's continue. William Pinfold of Record Collector reviewing the 2016 expanded reissue considered Salisbury a collection notable for tightness precision and a confident breadth of talent and praised the band for the album's variety. Damn, man. Isn't it amazing with these damn critics how they can go from one hatchet job of, uh, you know, uh, totally shooting down a really good piece of work and then in the next breath, another one comes along and does the exact opposite review. It's amazing just watching the, the variety of what... Um, uh, critics have to say. One of the album's tracks, Lady in Black, described as a stylish arrangement tune that builds from a folk-styled acoustic tune into a throbbing rocker full of ghostly harmonies and crunching riffs, became a hit in Germany upon its release in 1977, its re-release, earning the band the Radio Luxembourg Lion Award. All right. Yeah, you know, you have your critics that'll say this and that'll say that. And in the end, um, I mean, it doesn't always have to go hand in hand that with um, their commercial success here that the album is any good. But yeah, I'm looking at the success, not only successes, but reaching charts, uh, winning awards. And you're talking about, what did this guy say? Let me go back to that shit. Actually, you know what? Why the hell do we even want to focus on anything negative? Forget it. I'm not even going to repeat what he said. But, um, yeah, you know, I mean, like I said, everyone's entitled to their own opinion about, you know, um, what their standard is, what it is that they're trying to listen to that makes it somehow good or complete in their mind. But what I'm looking at is um, uh, all that they've accomplished, how much it's appeal, it's reached charts, it's um, international fame. And uh, it's won them awards. And you're calling it a piece of shit? 
Come on, dude. Anyway, man. I think this is a case where you shouldn't be saying a damn thing, right? What's that adage? If you don't have something good to say? All right, man. So, I'm just looking at uh, <clears throat> what I got coming up here. Uh, Charles, Sasha, Antoine, Alan, I uh, got reactions coming up for you gentlemen in the next couple of days and uh, want to do, what is it now? Um, I got to get back to Evelyn. Uh, I've been so damn busy. I haven't had a chance to message her back, but uh, I think she's got some sort of a Robert Plant thing for me. Uh, concert footage, maybe an interview, something like that. But I got to get back to her in regards to that. So where the Led Zeppelin factor is concerned, I think my next project will either be something Robert Plant or uh, another Jimmy Page interview. I know that there's um, uh, uh, another documentary floating around out there. I got to kind of go back to all of my messages and stuff like that. Uh, you guys wouldn't believe how many stuff I get sent, man. How many shit I get sent. I, uh, on average, this is on average. I sat down once and I actually counted all of the uh, stuff that I get sent. In one week, this is, <clears throat> this is the record. In one week, I received just under 3,000 links and recommendations and uh, ideas of this and ideas of 3,000 in one week, right? And uh, sometimes I, you know, of course it takes me weeks sometimes to read and uh, get through every, everything and then kind of make um, uh, separations and uh, categorize things and uh, of course a few things fall through the cracks, right? But, you know, I've got a lot of people who are very um, considerate towards that. Oh, I understand, Wayne, you know, things will fall through the cracks. It's all good. Um, but, yeah, you know, um, it's not that I'm ignoring you, but sometimes it takes me a little while to get to you. So uh, bear with me on that. Most people understand. Um, yeah, you know what? Here's a really crazy example of that. Marco. Speaking of Marco. Marco, over a year ago, sent me a playlist for um, Black Sabbath and Deep Purple, and I still haven't gotten to it yet, right? It's a big-ass playlist, though. So, uh, Marco, with you in mind, uh, I will get to this because it is a part of my Unholy Trinity uh, quest. I can't give anyone the Led Zeppelin treatment again. I just don't have that kind of time. An inclination, but I can at least go, let's say, album to album, uh, do the uh, discography thing. And that is what I set out to do with um, Deep Purple and Black Sabbath, completing, you know, my uh, tour of the Unholy Trinity. So, um, yeah, with Marco in mind, I, I got to hit up that list and I will one day, Marco, trust me. Anyways, um, yeah, that was a long time. Damn. That was May 19th of 2020. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, I will get to it, Marco. So, um, but yeah, that's what I got coming up in the next uh, little bit. And I want to uh, mix things up where it comes to a combination of uh, music reactions, a combination of um, documentaries, rockumentaries, stuff like that. Some things some people will like. Uh, other people will not like or whatever the case is, but at least I'm trying to mix it up with uh, where it comes to variety. I like it all. I like a combination of everything, right? So, but I definitely said that uh, where it comes to articles, unless it's a very, very important article and um, it's going to basically uh, edify uh, the mass majority, I usually don't read any articles only because uh, I have my Wikipedia read, so I don't want to overdo it with reading, but where it comes to the reactions, uh, the reviews in general, and uh, documentaries and different things like that, I'm all for it, man. Um, now, I, I don't think that I will ever really get into doing full movie reactions, like some people have been saying, hey, you know, 
I want to see uh, you do a movie reaction to, you know, the Pink Floyd movie or to uh, the movies from The Who. Uh, I'm not inclined to doing that yet. The most or the closest I will get to with that sort of thing would be, like, say, uh, for example, like a Led Zeppelin bootleg, you know, lengthwise and stuff like that. But um, uh, I haven't done too many of that only because my time is challenging. Anyway, man, all of that said, I'm just talking now. Uh, I'm going to bounce. Marco, this was great. Thank you very much. This was really, really excellent. And thanks for bringing Uriah Heap back into my focus. And I definitely want to do some more of them. Their progressive rock sound is so sweet, isn't it? And who the hell is the guitar player? Man, he really has a great command of that thing. Almost making it talk to you. I got to find out who that is. Anyways, you guys have yourselves a good one. Take care. Uh, next time you see me, it'll be uh, tomorrow and it'll be Charles's reaction. So until then, peace out.